Good morning, welcome to Storytime with Miss McDonald. Today we're gonna read a story about a dog who loves to chew, but there's one little problem. He doesn't like to chew his toys or his bones. Today we're gonna read a story called Shoe Dog. And it was written by Megan McDonald and illustrated by Katherine Tillerson. Part of the book is this. That's right, it's the front, and this is the back, and this part is called the spine. spine. And when we're putting a book on the bookshelf, we want to make sure that we can see the spine. Oh, look at that puppy. Who's a good boy? You're so cute. Yes, you are. He perked up an ear at the kitschy coo words. Dog wanted a home, a real home, a place full of hundreds of nose kisses, dozens of tummy rubs, a place as warm as soup and as cozy as pie. and things to chew, but he did not want a boring old bone, a squeaky old toy, a smelly old sock. No, he wanted, what do you think he wanted? The, a table and a couch. Do you remember what the story was called? It was called Shoe Dog. Shoe Dog. So what do you think this dog wants to chew? You think maybe shoes? He wanted to chew a shoe. Shoe dog. She herself called him. You're so cute, but that very day, shoe dog chewed through five high heels, four flip flops, three sneakers, two boots, and one wingtip. Bad dog, she herself said. That night, shoe dog slept at the bottom of the big bed. She did not give Shoe Dog one ear scratch or head pat, not one tummy rub, and not a single nose kiss. Why do you think she did that? Because he be bad. He was being bad. What was he doing that was bad? Shoeing. Shoeing things he shouldn't, like shoes. The next day, she came home with a new box. Not a big box, not a little box a just right box with noisy paper inside. Shoe Dog nosed open the lid. He rustled and tussled with the noisy paper. Do you know what was in that box? What? New shoes. Can I turn them up? Bad dog. She herself wagged and pointed. Shoe Dog had to spend a long while on the corner rug with not one thing to chew. That night, Shoe Dog did not sleep on the big bed with the cozy covers in the land of upstairs, but the very next day, she came home with another new box. Not a big box, not a little box, a just right box. This time she took it straight to the land of upstairs. Shoe Dog turned in circles. Shoe Dog jumped at the gate. Shoe Dog jumped over the gate. He raced up the stairs. Ba-doom, ba-doom. What do you think Shoe Dog's gonna do when he gets upstairs? Shoe Dog. He sniffed here and here and everywhere. There. On the bed was the new box, and inside the box was a brand new pair of shoes. Shoe Dog settled down between the arms of the comfy chair in the land of upstairs to have himself a good chew. Uh -oh. Bad dog, she herself said. That night, Shoe Dog slept downstairs on the cold, cold floor with only a mop for a friend. Shoe Dog did not want to go back to the land of sad puppies and scratched up cats and one-eared bunnies. No!
For the next long while, Shoe Dog was a good dog. He did not chew so much as a flea bite. Then one day, she herself came home with a great big munchy, crunchy, crinkly, wrinkly, bright, shiny bag full of one, two, three new boxes. She took the big bag up the stairs. Shoe Dog lifted an eyebrow, twitched a whisker, perked up an ear. Was it? Could it be? Shoe Dog was sure that he heard the friendly rustle bustle of noisy paper. Shoe Dog raced up the stairs again. Badoom, badoom. He sniffed beneath the big bed. There was no shoes. He sniffed all around, comfy chair, no shoes. He sniffed under the forest of dresses, no shoes. There, way up high on a tippy top shelf above the forest of dresses was the bright shiny bag with box after box after box inside. Shoe Dog leaped onto comfy chair. He pulled and pawed and tugged and lugged and what's gonna happen to the bag? Break. Crash! Down came bright, shiny bag. Down came a tumble of boxes. Down came a jumble of noisy paper. Shoes and all. Shoe Dog stood still. Shoe Dog stared. Shoe Dog sniffed. No! Shoe Dog did not, would not, could not ever chew this brand new shoe. She herself heard the crash and came running. She stood still. She stared. Shoe Dog rubbed noses with Shoe Cat and Shoe Dog tickled whiskers with Shoe Cat. Shoe Dog gave Shoe Cat a lick, 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 then a slurp, and then a great big doggy slobber kiss. Is it a real cat? No. It's a slipper, isn't it? That looks like a cat. Yeah. Does Shoe Dog get tricked? I think she tricked Shoe Dog. Good dog, she said. She scratched his ear. She patted his head. She rubbed his tummy and kissed Shoe Dog right on the nose. That night, Shoe Dog jumped on the big bed in the land of upstairs. and curled up with his newfound friend until the two were warm as soup and cozy as pie. Is that what furry was the going? end. Have you ever had a pet that liked to chew things that he shouldn't have? Um, my dog, my Jake, the shoes off, my slippers, my stuffed animals, and my kitchen food stuff. What are some things that your pet has chewed up that he shouldn't have? What do you do when your dog chews on things that he shouldn't? He does a bad boy and he does tell a bad. Even though your dog chews things sometimes, are you still glad you have him and do you still love him? Yes, I do. He's my favorite dog. All right, boys and girls, I'd like for you to draw me a picture of your dog or a cat or another animal that you have. And if you don't have any pets, draw me a picture of a pet that you wish you had. Don't forget to put your name at the top and try to write your pet's name. Our dog's name is Jake. So if we were writing Jake, it starts with a J, J, J. What letter makes that sound? That's right, a J. And then we hear A which is the letter A, Mom. and then we hear K, K, and K makes that sound. That's right. Good job.